Hello, I am Dr. Abhishek Sharma. In this video, I will discuss the threshold effect in frequency modulated systems. So, let us start the threshold effect in frequency modulated systems. The threshold effect dominantly valid for non-linear systems. Uh, when a noise is large as compared to the uh, signal at the input of the let us suppose the envelope detector because the envelope detector is a non-linear device uh, which is because of the diode circuitry uh, so so when a noise is large as compared to the signal at the input of the system the detected output has a message signal completely mingled with noise so it means that if the input signal to noise ratio which is SI upon NI is below a certain level and that is called a threshold level so the noise in this case dominates over the message signal the threshold effect or you can say threshold is defined as the value of the input signal to noise ratio below which the output signal to noise ratio which is S0 upon N0 deteriorates much more rapidly than the input signal to noise ratio the threshold effect starts in in an envelope detector basically wherever the carrier power to noise power approaches unity or less that means it clearly indicates that the noise is dominating or you can say the noise power is dominating the signal power so it is important to stress that the threshold effect is the property of basically non-linear devices on the other hand such an effect is not observed in a linear or you can say synchronous detector circuitry as i have already told you the non-linearity in the frequency demodulation process is because of the envelope detector as this envelope detector is comprised of uh, diode circuitry because the diode is a non-linear device you can say so that's why there is a non-linear relationship between the input and output so i'm going to just uh, drawing the block diagram for frequency modulation so first circuitry or block diagram you can say this is the amplitude limiter second is the high pass filter which is basically a differentiator after that the output of the differentiator is passing through an envelope detector and after that a low pass filter so you will get the output message at the output of the uh, low pass filter so the noise analysis of the angle demodulation scheme is basically uh, depend upon the assumption that the SNR at the demodulator input is high so with this assumption the signal to noise component at the demodulator output are additive and uh, as I have already proved that there is a relationship between the power spectral density and the frequency that means the noise power and the frequency relation at the output of the frequency modulated uh, circuitry so that means that because of this uh, the non-linear envelope detector there are certain limitations for example I have proved all the definitions for the low noise case. So due to the non-linearity nature of the demodulation process, there is no reason that the additive signal and noise component at the input of the modulator results in additive signal and noise component at the output of the demodulator. So the high SNR assumption is not at all correct in general because as I have already said, uh, we have proved the relationship between the power spectral density at the output as I am just going to write k square divided by ac square omega square and eta for mod of omega less than or equal to omega m. So uh, this is this uh, assumption is because of I have, I have already considered that small noise case. So in this case as noise is very small so the signal to noise ratio will be high. So the high SNR assumption is not at all correct in general. So the signal and noise process at the output of the demodulator are completely mixed in a single process by a complicated non-linear functionality. As the phase deviation produced by the noise signal in FM is much smaller than the phase deviation produced by the modulating signal provided that the noise is smaller than the carrier. 
Thus, in low noise case, the distortion produced by the noise at the output of the FM detector is negligible in comparison to the desired modulating signal. So as I have already told you, uh, the I have already considered the low noise case. So in other words, noise is almost suppressed by the signal. So this will happen only at when the noise voltage or you can say the noise signal is very very low and compared to the carrier signal. So the noise suppression characteristic of FM can also be applied to any interfering signal of almost same frequency. So this phenomena basically is considered as the capture effect. So this is very important. Uh, there is a very important phenomena in this uh, frequency modulation which is known as capture effect. So this will also be the uh, active participant of threshold effect. So what I already told you that in FM detector for low noise case in comparison to the desired modulating signal, uh, the noise is almost suppressed by the signal as I have already told you. Uh, the noise suppression characteristic of an FM can also be applied to any interference signal. That means if any other signal which is equivalent to the, uh, the frequency of the transmitted frequency modulated signal, then the demodulation at, at the demodulation end, if the other signal is which is around nearest to the transmitted signal of the previous frequency modulated signal, if the second one is transmitted on high power, then the demodulation process will be captured by that high power signal. So this phenomenon is basically known as captured effect which is defined as in generally I am just providing the statement when FM signal from two transmitter operate on the same or nearly same carrier frequency reach the receiver simultaneously the signal of weak magnitude is suppressed almost completely by a strong signal. So and the FM receiver reproduces only the strong signal. So this effect is similar to the noise suppression action where the weaker signal plays the role of noise. So the weak signal due to the common channel and adjacent channel interferences. This is very uh, useful feature of FM system. So AM basically in if I am talking about the amplitude modulation system. So this such kind of AM is uh, such kind of uh, uh, issues are not there in amplitude modulated systems. So at low SNR the signal is not distinguishing right? from noise and a multi elation or threshold effect is present. So threshold effect means there are certain level of signal to noise ratio. If from that certain level to signal to noise ratio, when SNR decreases, the noise captures the demodulation process. And so at the output of the low pass filter, you will definitely get no message other than noise. So this is basically threshold effect. So there exists a specific signal to noise ratio at the input of a demodulator known as the threshold SNR beyond which signal multilation occurs. So in uh, to avoid such kind of scenarios, uh, we just cons we have just considered the noise is very very low in comparison to the signal. So in that case only you will uh, uh, obtain the actual amount of uh, signal power at the output of the receiver. So the existence of the threshold effect places an upper limit on the trade off between the bandwidth and power in an FM system. So this limit is a practical limit in the value of modulation index. So this is modulation index, which is delta F upon FM. So as I've discussed, when the carrier to noise ratio is slightly less than the unity, the frequency of spikes generally uh, is small. The discriminator circuit, which is basically a differentiator, I will say, uh, differentiate the input signal, incoming signal. So if the noise is very high in compared to the signal at this point, it will generate spikes. So as the noise input power is increased, the carrier to noise ratio is decreased. So the receiver breaks and as the carrier to noise ratio is reduced, further crackling sound is here. So this crackling sound is because of these spikes. So and at the output of SNR cannot be predicted by the equation provided by the SN naught omega as I've already told you that is equal to K square upon AC square into omega square metal power three sorry and that is eta omega square. 
for mod of omega is less than or equal to omega m. This positive or negative spikes is generated at the discriminator output under large noise case. So where actually what happened? A pulse triplet will be generated under low noise cases. This will will not be happen, but at the large noise case when SNR decreases, this phenomena will occur. So when the carrier to noise ratio is slightly less than the unity, the frequency of spike generation is small, and each spike. produce individual clicking sound in the receiver but when the carrier to noise ratio is further decrease so that the ratio is moderately less than unity the spikes are generated rapidly and the clicks merges into the sputtering sound so this phenomena is known as the threshold effect in frequency modulated systems the minimum carrier to noise ratio for which the fm noise improvement is not detrited significantly can be considered as the threshold level so this phenomena is threshold effect it is also defined as when the snr becomes even slightly less unity an impulse of noise is generated in the previous slide as i have already told you that because of this noise when noise is very high it will capture the demodulation process that means it will reduce the strength of the signal at the demodulation process you will only get the sputtering sounds so this noise impulse basically appears at the output of the detector in the form of click sound so if the snr ratio is further decreased so that the ratio is moderately less than unity the impulses are generated rapidly and click merges into the sputtering sound so this phenomena is threshold defect so the spikes plays a very dominant role for frequency modulation systems when the noise is very large in comparison to the signal we can also uh, characterize the noise now if a carrier frequency is the center of a band then the noise spectral component are symmetrically placed on both side of the carrier frequency you can better understand with the help of the diagram which is the fourier transform of the output of the discriminator for noise spike case so let us suppose this is our x axis at frequency scale and this is the fourier transform so let us suppose this is f omega because of the nonlinear nature let us suppose this is the fourier transform or this is the omega m minus and omega m plus so this is your spectrum of message so this is the fourier transform fourier transform of noise at the output of the discriminator for noise spike like so if the carrier frequency is in the center of the band the noise spectral component are symmetric placed on both side of the carrier frequency and the average number of positive spikes per second let us suppose this average is f plus is same as the number of average of negative going spike per second let us suppose this is f minus so it for an ideal uh, if filter in intermediate filter basically of bandwidth b the center frequency at a carrier let us suppose that center frequency is fc uh, carrier frequency is fc the frequency of spike generation is given by f is equal to f plus and f minus that is equal to b upon 2 root 3 er fc Under root rho, where rho is given by a square divided by two of beta into eta. Okay. 
in practice the threshold effect occurs when the input carrier to noise ratio is below 13 db if the row that is this one is kept above 20 the average number of spikes generated per second is very small and the threshold effect may be avoided hence for avoiding the fm threshold row should be considered as greater than or equal to 20 so a square upon 2 of beta uh, sorry 2 of so a square upon 2 of eta into b should be greater than or equal to 20 that means a square by 2 that is the carrier power basically is greater than or equal to 20 into eta into b so the hence the threat you can say that fm uh, threshold effect may vary and effect may be avoided by keeping the carrier power this is carrier power greater than or equal to 20 eta into p so that's it in this video this is the threshold effect in frequency modulated or analog modulation system so thank you very much